So here's the question. Can the United States, but also Russia, China, or for what matters anyone else, build a forward swept combat aircraft? Well, this question has a clear answer, and the answer is... The forward swept wing is not a new concept. In the late 30s, it was already clear that nearing the speed of sound, the nature of the flow changes radically. The air becomes a compressible fluid and the swept wing are a way to reduce the adverse effects produced by compressibility. Is compressibility a word? In fact, at the time, the forward swept wing configuration was considered attractive for two reasons. The first, that it was going to leave quite a lot of room at the center of the fuselage and that was relatively useful, for example, for a bomber. The second reason was that if Compared with a swept back configuration, the swept forward configuration would have had a lower induced drag. Induced drag is quite a complex subject to discuss and it's not really intuitive. For the moment it is enough to say that the wingtip vortices are less intense with the forward swept wing. What I mean with this is that the pressure inside the core of the vortex is higher than the pressure that you would have with the naft swept wing. And if the pressure is higher, the wing is less sucked backward by the vortices. Sir. Your aerodynamic professor at university would regret having given you 30 out of 30 at the exam. Thank you, Otis, you are always so charmingly nice. While the forward swept wing is also attractive for another couple of annoying reasons that happen at transonic speed. With an aft swept wing, the position and the sweep angle of the shock wave on the upper side of the wing may not be the best in terms of reducing drag. And in this case, we are talking about the wave drag created by the shock. Also, if you are unlucky the position of the shockwave will interfere with the ailerons, reducing their effectiveness, which is always something that you don't want because you want to keep your aircraft maneuverable. Also with the aft swept wing, there's another phenomenon that is called the boundary layer drift. It may cause an undesired lift distribution above the wing, and it could also be the cause of a loss of control at high angles of attack. However, none of these problems were known in the 30s because basically nobody had flown at those speed and came back to tell the story. So apparently there are good reasons to use the forward swept wing and the Germans toward the end of the Second World War actually investigated this solution and created a few designs that made use of it. However, they soon realized that there was a problem that nobody had anticipated and it was a structural problem. The thing is, in flight, the wing is bent upward by the lift. No wing is perfectly rigid, all wings bend. Well, actually every structure is bent, but if you're walking above a concrete bunker, the bend will be microscopic, but the aircraft wings bend quite a lot because you want them to be light and there's not much material to take the load. When the wing bends in flight, it doesn't only bend, it also twists. If the wing is swept backwards, the tip of the wing bends downward. This means that the lift per unit of span at the tip is lower than in the rest of the wing, no further bending is induced, and this is a stable configuration. Added bonus, the tip of the wing will stall probably a bit later than the rest of the wing, and this is something that we like, because the ailerons at the tip of the wing will remain effective even if a large portion of the wing is stalled. With the forward swept wing, the wing bends and the tip of the wing twists upward. In this case, the lift per unit of span at the tip of the wing actually increases with the bending, inducing more bending, and this is not a stable situation. In this situation, the tip of the wing will be the part of the wing that will stall first, so you will lose control very early. The consequence for something like this is often a smoking hole in the ground. Eh? However, this is not everything, because when it rains, it pours. Forward swept wing turned out to be prone to flutter. 
Flutter is a type of vibration when bending and torsional vibration frequencies actually coalesce. They are basically the same. And this is a self-exciting situation where the amplitude of the vibration grows and it can potentially grow in an uncontrolled way and cause structural failure. So if a forward swept wing starts to flap, for example, for the turbulence, the tip twists upward, so it receives an extra bump upward, and this increases the amplitude of the flapping rather than damping it. Do it a few times, and potentially you reach amplitudes and structural loads that are dangerous for the wing. And I let you imagine what may happen next. Yes, of course, you can build a wing that is stiff and dampened enough to avoid all these problems, but it will be so heavy that probably is not worth it. Actually, a conventional metallic wing can have a, a sweep forward of around 10 to 15 degrees before uh, stiffening becomes too heavy and it is definitely not worth it. So the forward swept wing was considered a dead end and uh, for about 40 years nobody thought about it anymore. To be entirely honest, there have been a few civilian projects that made use of it, but it was a very modest sweep. So the wing was not much different than a stride wing. In the late 70s and early 80s, composite materials actually reached a level of maturity where it was possible to try something new. Composite materials are made with crossed layers of fabric in a matrix of essentially plastic. Yes, it's much more complex than this, but I don't want to stray away, so just stay with me. The fabric obviously has directional features. That is, is very, that is, is very resilient when pulled, but is very soft when compressed. And in general, composite materials are lighter than metal for the same amount of structural resistance. So it became pretty obvious that a layer of composite material, a stiff one like carbon fiber, placed on the lower face of the wing in the correct position with the right orientation could actually counter the twisting of the tip of the wing. We are now demonstrating this phenomenon with the help of our powerful simulation facilities. So, this is a wing. The wing is mounted cantilever on the aircraft like this. Uh, let us suppose that the aircraft is flying in this direction, hence the airflow is in this direction. If I push up at this end, the wing bends and the tip twists. And this is the case of the backwards swept wing. If I push up at this other end, the wing still bends, but the tip twists the other way. And this is the case of the forward swept wing. But you see that there is a point where if I apply a force, it bends without twisting. This means that the wing and any other similar structure have a torsion axis around which the tip twisting happens. Right, now let's add a layer of stiff and stress-resistant composite material at an angle with the flexural axis, with a forward sweep of about 10 degrees. Now you can see that in the case of the forward swept wing, even if I push here in the corner, the twist is lower. If the tape was really stiff, the twist would be inverted and the shape of the wing would be something like this. So this technology advancement made possible in principle to build an aircraft fit for combat and military use. In the early 80s, Brahman and NASA built an experimental plane called the X-29. It had a beautiful forward swept wing, canards and mobile surfaces on the tail strakes. It really didn't have a conventional tail. The aircraft flew in 1984 and it worked. It was very maneuverable, it was liked by the pilots and demonstrated a very, very good behavior at high angles of attack. 
And in fact, once the problem of the wingtip twist is fixed, the forward swept wing tend to stall quite gracefully from the root. The aircraft remains controllable and spin departure is less likely. However, it was an extremely unstable design and it required a fly-by-wire system to be flown. The Russians, then Soviets, roughly in the same years started their own experimental program with the Suhoi Bureau. However, it actually morphed relatively quickly into the Suhoi 47 Berkut. Suhoi, after a few demonstrators, actually built a larger aircraft that was definitely used for research, but it was also suitable to be transformed into a combat aircraft. The project never moved forward, those were complicated years for Russia, but to this day Suhoi keeps offering the aircraft and for future development should any customer be interested. So everything's good. Well, if everything was good, then why we don't see any new project using a forward swept wing configuration? The first is that similar performances in terms of maneuverability, stall and post-stall characteristics can be achieved with conventional designs. From this point of view, the forward swept wing doesn't have any particular advantage against the Lurks or the Delta Canards, and if you throw thrust vectoring in the mix, it's even less helpful. The second is that a configuration with three sets of surfaces like the X-29 or the Su-47, is definitely not great for stealth. Well, at the time when they were designed, stealth was not really a concern uh, as it is today. Probably something could be done to reduce the radar cross-section, but definitely not an ideal configuration. A conventional configuration is much easier to work with. But we are not done yet. There is a deeper flow of this configuration that is very, very difficult to overcome. But we need to understand a couple of things about aircraft equilibrium and stability first. In a conventional stable configuration, the center of gravity is ahead of the aerodynamic center. The tail is counterbalancing the pitching moment that derives from this arrangement and the tail lift is pointed downward. In a conventional but unstable configuration, the center of gravity is slightly behind the aerodynamic center, and to contrast the pitching up moment, the tail lift is pointing upward. Now, in a configuration like the X-29 or the Berkut, designed for transonic and supersonic flight, since the wing is in a rear position, the arm between the center of lift and the center of gravity is longer than in a conventional configuration. So you have a little effective tail in a situation where you would want a very effective tail. Well, you can always build a large tail, but it's obviously going to be heavy, draggy, and also the aerodynamic loads in the aft part of the fuselage are going to be high, the, in that part needs to be strengthened, and it would be heavier, so yeah, it's not a good solution. With a forward swept wing that is swept by a decent angle uh, forward, it's almost necessary to have canards. These must be lifting canards ahead of the center of gravity. And these canards must always be lifting and they will probably tend to be quite large to contrast the pitching down moment that we have already said is probably going to be higher than in conventional stable configuration. What does it mean that they will always be lifting? Well, if you consider a delta canard or a one of flanker versions with the canards or uh, the canards on the phantom, well, the aircraft can still fly without the canards. The canards are not necessary. They are there to improve maneuverability, to get some other aerodynamic advantages, but they are not necessary to keep the aircraft stable, in equilibrium, and maneuverable. With the forward swept wing, you need the canards to keep lifting as the tail of the aircraft would do. Yes, I know, it looks cool, but aerodynamically speaking, it may work, but it's definitely not optimal. 
In fact, if you pay attention, both the X29 and the Su-47 have some form of tail surfaces, and I believe that this is sort for sharing the burden of the equilibrium of the aircraft, trying to reduce the size of the canards. To be honest, the Su-47 has small canards, but also has uh, some form of lifting surfaces in front of the canards, so we have still a complex configuration. Sir, you forgot to mention stability. Yes, yeah, Otis, you are right. Uh, when I recorded the video, I forgot to mention that this configuration is an intrinsically unstable configuration, and I mean, way too much to be ideal or effective. Uh, yes, of course, you can fix this with usual fly-by-wire controls, but the aircraft will be flying on a knife edge like the X-29 was doing. So let's put all of this together. You end up with a complex configuration that is working, but it is, well, more complex, it has some non-negligible drawbacks, and all of this for what? A bit less of induced drag at subsonic and transonic speed? Well, it's not worth it. It's simply not worth it. You understand that in this light, this kind of configuration is not really interesting anymore. To be thorough, it is worth mentioning there are some advantages, disadvantages and features uh, uh, that are also worth mentioning. A pro is that the wing structure can be designed slightly lighter with a forward swept wing. A con is that these wing configurations may have your instability problems. A feature is that the lift curve is actually quite steep and this could be good or bad depending on the aircraft mission. So let's go back to the initial question. Is it possible to design a fighter combat aircraft with a forward swept wing? The answer is yes, but there is no real advantage in doing so. Okay, if you are still here, congratulations and thank you very much for following this very, very complex explanation. It has been a while since we did anything like this on the channel and it's great being back. And if you're interested in similar deep dives on aircraft design and aircraft features, well, there are several videos available on the channel and they're going to appear beside me. Thank you very, very much for watching and see you there.